Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In recent episodes of Realism Overall Sandbox, I have examined how payloads meant for NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, uh, could be re-manifested on a new Glenn rocket from Blue Origin, mainly taking advantage of the fact that Blue Origin's new Glenn has reusable first stage, a reasonably large-sized fairing and uh, also pretty good performance to low Earth orbit and beyond, especially beyond. Uh, of course, something like Falcon Heavy has better performance to low Earth orbit, but it has uh, more limited fairing and its payload capacity to high orbits is lower. Um, that, setting aside the whole BFR thing for reasons that I explained in a previous video, but uh, the idea was that we could chop up the payloads from SLS. You would have to still chop it up because SLS has much larger capacity, about 105 tons to low Earth orbit given the EDS stage, the Earth departure stage with four RL-10 engines. But in this episode, I want to make a more direct comparison. Uh, in this case, replacing the engines on SLS with the engines from the New Glenn rocket. So uh, these look like RS-25s and in, in fact says RS-25, but I've got a configuration on here for the BE-4. And the numbers we are using are uh, 2,625 kilonewtons vacuum thrust with 338 seconds ISP burning methane and oxygen. Now, it is likely that it has better ISP than this. This is probably the worst ISP that these engines could possibly have. Uh, as far as thrust, uh, this is what they say these engines have, so pretty confident on that. Um, if we take a look at the RS-25 instead, RS-25s, well, it would be the D-E slash version, have 2,300 kilonewtons. The BE-4 has a little bit more than that, but way less efficiency, of course. The vacuum ISP of the RS-25 D-E is uh, 453. Uh, BE4 just 338, so it's actually a pretty big downside on the ISP. Uh, it is carrying more fuel. It's a heavier rocket like this. It's 2,700 tons, and that is because, well, I've kept the exact same liquid oxygen tank. So that's that tank there. It's the same one that's on SLS, but I've put an identical liquid oxygen tank here and filled it with the appropriate amount of liquid methane. And actually, uh, that means underfilling it. There's some spare volume available, about 211 kiloliters. So that's a lot of, that's about um, between a quarter and a third of the total volume of the tank. And that's to make sure that the mixture is, uh, se is correct. But basically, you can't really use the same tank. But if you wanted to make it easy on yourself, uh, maybe they could fill out, uh, figure out a way to use the same tank, basically. There are uh, substantial issues with this arrangement. Uh, first of all, it's a lot shorter than the SLS, but that's not a substantial issue. One substantial issue is that the uh, SRB connections might be a little bit more complicated because I think... Uh, actually, I think they attach at the nose. Though it doesn't show it right here. So they probably would attach to the upper liquid oxygen tank. Right now, though, the liquid oxygen tank ends here. It would actually be up here so that they could attach to it properly. And since it's down here, what they would be attaching to is the interstage, which is not right. That would not be possible. So that's a downside because of the way it's shortened. Oh, and incidentally, of course, since we're using the liquid oxygen uh, tank, the pipe doesn't connect, but that's uh, just a superficial issue. Uh, the question is, if we replace the four engines with the four BE4s, and also replace the upper stage engines, the four RL-10s, with a single BE-3U. So as you can see, we have a single BE-3U. Uh, it, its uh, numbers are 670 kil uh, kilonewtons in vacuum and 453 vacuum ISP. So worse ISP than the RL-10s, but uh, better thrust than four of them combined. And uh, even better, uh, it is going to be cheaper because it's just one engine, whereas four RL tens are very expensive. So basically, there's a very cheap uh, option. The RS twenty fives are definitely more expensive than the BE fours. The single BE three U is definitely cheaper than the RL tens. And uh, well, 
when you think about it, uh, the BE-4s are going to be used on the Vulcan rocket, potentially. I mean, at least that's what ULA is looking at. And if ULA is alright with tossing them into the ocean, I guess they can't be that expensive. So, that's my logic. Of course, on the New Glenn rocket, they're supposed to be recovered. But uh, there is a rocket that's planning to use them. Uh, and they're just going to toss them. And presumably they figure that that's going to be economical because ULA is a private company. So it has to care about profits, if you will. Uh, so yeah, that's why I figured that they'd be a good choice. Thinking about this, this means that this core right now for a modified SLS has less power than the New Glenn rocket, right? I mean, New Glenn has seven of these at the bottom, and its second stage has two of the BE-3Us. So this is actually much less powerful as far as cores are concerned, but it's got the two big SRBs, and thanks to the two big SRBs, the actual fuel that the core is carrying is more. Or I think actually it might be still less, but I mean, it's... Uh, more than you would expect from having four engines, and that's because when the SRBs uh, stop, we've just got a thrust weight ratio of one right there, whereas the New Glenn rocket has to launch with a thrust weight ratio of one at the core because it doesn't have boosters. Anyway, the, the point of this is that normally SLS would have a capacity to orbit of 105 tons, and that's with the SLS Block 1B. This configuration does not have that much uh, it has 85 tons, which is still better than the SLS Block 1. And I'm using the big fairing, the 10 meter fairing, tall fairing. Um, let's see how that works out and whether we can really launch 85 tons to orbit with this configuration. If we can, it's a lot cheaper than any SLS configuration they've got planned. Okay, so here we are and this is how it looks. Actually, even though, you know, we're obviously shorter on the core because we're just using two liquid oxygen tanks stacked together, it doesn't look too bad. I've called it BELS, the BE launch system, because we're using BE engines. I don't actually know why it's truncated BE per se. Well, I guess maybe for Bezos? I don't know. Anyway, uh, here we go. And of course, with the more powerful upper stage, it has a better launch profile overall. The fuel mixture for the upper stage has to be modified as well, so the liquid oxygen tank for the upper stage is underfueled. I kept it the same physical size and also the same dry mass, but it has less fuel in it. So it would have to be underfueled to match the mixture I've got for the BE-3U, which I'm not sure is the correct mixture for the BE-3U. They haven't released any information about what that mixture is, to my knowledge. The solid rocket boosters are not modified. So you might ask, why not use Raptor engines from SpaceX? And the basic reason is because SpaceX isn't selling the Raptor engines to anybody else. Uh, maybe to the Air Force, but not to... Uh, I mean, we know that these engines, the BE-4s, are going to be sold to ULA. So, I don't know whether SpaceX would want to sell it for use on the Space Launch System or anything like that. If so, uh, the performance of such a rocket would simply be better than this. I mean, the ISP of the Raptor engines is manifestly better than the ISP we have here. Uh, the thrust might be a little bit lower in the initial version of the Raptor engine. They're planning to operate the Raptor engine later on to higher thrust, and those will be more powerful than the BE-4s. But I think the initial version of the Raptor engine is less powerful than the B4. I'd have to check. It's pretty close. Well, one downside is these engines would not produce clouds the way the RS-25s do. Uh, but I think the upsides outweigh that. Of course, having a non, well, having methane and oxygen instead of a fully cryogenic hydrogen stage at the bottom might have its benefits. It's just easier to handle, and probably cheaper to handle methane instead of hydrogen. You might wonder about just putting on the SRBs on the side of a New Glenn. After all, I've already stated that New Glenn uh, has more thrust initially, and also on the upper stage. But that would be sort of a waste. 
because New Glenn, uh, the tank size doesn't take advantage of the SRBs. You need large tanks and basically starting off with a thrust to weight ratio lower than one to take real advantage of having those big SRBs. If you try to just slap them on New Glenn, you're gonna start off with a thrust to weight ratio of more than two, which for this kind of rocket is not a good idea. Also, uh, New Glenn's uh, profile, it has a seven meter main tank and then it sort of has a skirt that bulges out. Uh, that would interfere with the SRBs, which also have skirts that bulge out. So putting the SRBs on that tank isn't great. And of course, it's not reinforced to deal with the thrust of the SRBs on the side like that, and they're pretty darn powerful. So, of course, I'm not entirely sure where. Oh, I think we've had a problem. Well, go figure. Okay, well, see, uh, I think I might want to move where the staging of the fairings is. Yeah. Okay, well, view it as a bonus liftoff. Here we go. Run B E L S bells. And just double check. Incidentally, the fairings are not going to go off cleanly anyway. For reasons I don't understand, the uh, decoupling of these particular fairings on this particular mod for SLS, uh, they just do weird things. The inner stage does weird things too, so... It's, it's not going to look particularly good when the fairings separate, but at least the vehicle won't blow up if I've got them here instead of over here. So just for reference, of course, uh, 85 ton capacity is still uh, almost double what the New Glenn can manage. And the fairing is going to be substantially larger than what New Glenn has. 85 tons would still be enough to launch Orion to whatever orbit they need it to go to. If, it wa if they want to launch Orion in a service module to the Lagrange point, that's fine with this payload capacity, no problem. Okay, booster separation. Because we're getting a little bit more thrust from the upper stage, it, it won't have to hold as severe a pitch as SLS needs to when trying to get a very heavy load to low Earth orbit. SLS, of course, like Ariane 5 and uh, Atlas in certain configurations is and Delta 4 is optimized for higher orbits, geosynchronous orbits and beyond. Uh, it's not really optimized for delivering heavy payloads to low Earth orbit and that's why it has to maintain this high pitch and still maintain a high pitch on the second stage. But uh, using the B3 engine helps a little bit. Uh, it should be noted one of the benefits of having four engines, in the case of SLS Block 1B, four RL10, so here's fairing separation in this weird way. You can see the way it sort of separates off to the side doesn't really seem right somehow. I think that's because something's gotten rotated. But anyway, um, one of the benefits of having a bunch of RL10s is that if one fails, you've still got enough to continue, whereas if you have just one engine, you've got a bit more of a problem. Uh, but that could be solved by simply putting two uh, BE3Us and making sure that they can both point through the center of mass. And in that case, you've basically got it handled. So, yeah, and of course, BE, the two BE3Us would just be identical to the expendable upper stage of the New Glenn rocket. So, presumably, if Blue Origin, a private company, didn't think that it was uneconomical to use two engines there for that stage. It won't be too pricey compared to RL-10s, which are pretty darn expensive. But yeah, if you really want to optimize for, for low Earth orbit, you would probably put two of them there, which would conveniently have about exactly the same thrust as a single J2X, which is the engine, the upper stage engine that would have been used on the Constellation program, but was scrapped. The thing about the J2X is it's made by the, it would have been made, 
by the same company that makes the RL-10. So it was really up to them which one they wanted to push forward, and I guess they didn't want to go through the process of fully developing the J2X. They instead pushed for the use of the RL-10s. Go figure. Another fringe benefit of uh, using BE-4s and BE-3s, uh, rather than, say, the Raptor engines, is that uh, Blue Origin very cleverly placed their production facilities in Alabama. And, uh, well, part of the reason why certain engines and boosters get used for NASA programs is because uh, those companies are located in Alabama. Uh, which has a very strong stalwart senator defending local industry. And since Blue Origin, and this is entirely why Blue Origin located in Alabama, uh, to make sure that if they ever decided to switch engines to the BE-4, um, those jobs would stay in Alabama. So that is a plus side. It is going to maintain local manufacturing and not be a problem for uh, for the Senate at all. It would not be a change in where the jobs are located. Sometimes you have to think about these things. So you can see it's about a nine minute stage up here and I don't know if the BE-3U burns for nine minutes but I, I presume it could handle it. Um, on the New Glenn rocket, I've got it burning for, I think, six minutes, maybe a little bit more than six minutes, which is almost certainly within its range. Nine minutes is a bit long, but probably not a big deal either. For reference, the J2 on Saturn V burned for eight minutes and 20 seconds on the third stage. Now, in order to make this long burn time, we were actually going to start falling and we'll have to accept that for a while. Okay, we've got a little bit less than four minutes left in the burn. Uh, it is catching itself now. The vertical speed is tending towards zero. Uh, we are still falling though, but it's well within our expected sort of situation. Everything is looking good. Okay, we are about to make orbit. It's doing fairly well. We're at 215 kilometers. And it's shut down at 220 by 162. We've got a little bit left. We probably could have circularized. And uh, it's 100 tons right now, but that's including the spent stage. If we separate, we see that it's 84.978 tons, close enough to 85. So, I would say that that's the capacity of this particular rocket with these engines. So the question is, if we were going to plan a Mars mission as sort of a backup to BFR, okay, let's, let's uh, say that we just want a backup to SpaceX's plans, because who wants a monopoly? Uh, which should be the launcher? Uh, just New Glenn? Uh, and chop up the missions? Um, a sort of Bell's version uh, with the BE engines on the SLS structure or SLS itself or some other configuration uh, using existing hardware of course or planned hardware. What, what would be the best thing to do as a backup plan? And uh, on that question and I'll get your answers in the comments to the video I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.